Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Fantasy Nuts UK. We missed last week. We wasn't about. That one keeps falling out, so we'll leave it there. But um, I am honoured to be joined by one of the greats in the Dynasty Fantasy Football um, community here in the UK. He is a writer for Dynasty League Football and Hashtag Football, as well as the co-host of the Five Yard Dynasty pod and the co-founder slash organiser of the UK fantasy football event we had in London this year. It's going again next year. Rich Coolin, how is it going, mate? I'm very good, mate. Thank you. Um, and no, the the honour is all mine, trust me. I'm very appreciative of, uh, of you coming. I have to say, when you started that intro, I was looking around thinking, is somebody else uh, joining us? Because, yeah, I'm not quite sure if I'm there yet. But, uh, yeah, one, one day I aspire to be a great one, shall we say. I like to give everyone a, a bit of a warm welcome anyway, but how, just quickly, how have you been getting on this season in your leagues and with a bit of DFS and stuff? I've seen you've been dabbling and... Yeah, I, um, yeah, D- Dynasty's been going great. I've been doing pretty well in Dynasty. Um, redraft's been pretty terrible, if I'm being honest. Uh, I think the the big charity leagues have have not been my friend this year. Uh, I'm doing okay in Scott Fishbowl, but yeah, the EFFC, I'm terrible. Um, Polly's, Polly's playoff, I'm terrible. Um, the Warrior Bowl, I've been terrible. So yeah, maybe, maybe not not the best year for those. Um, yeah, DFS, not can't claim to be an expert, not something I do a lot of, but dabbled a couple of times, had, had a couple of big wins, which was quite nice. Um, and yeah, sort of don't really have the time that I want to spend. I'm a, I'm a very much an all or nothing kind of person, so... If I'm gonna do DFS, I want to do DFS properly and like properly dive in. And like with dynasty leagues and Patreon questions and stuff like that, I just don't have the time to commit to it. So it's something I want to do more, but I need to kind of carve out some more time to do it. I mean, absolutely. Like there's so much good DFS content out there as well. Um whenever you want to have a go on DraftKings or whatever, you can research for the week, you can find articles and stuff at the drop of a hat can't you and um but tell everybody you mentioned your patron there as well and what else you've been up to articles you've been writing what you've been working on so far this year mate yeah so um yeah got weekly article trade article over at dlf um got a couple of projects in the pipeline there which is quite exciting um the, the, yeah, obviously the the five yard dynasty pod. Um, I've got my patron um, site, which is, is growing. We're up to forty five members now, which is absolutely wild. Um, and yeah, a couple of very exciting projects, hopefully kicking off early next year. And then obviously the the UK FFC again, which will be in the summer. Um, it was a great event last year. We're hoping to kind of go bigger and better this year. Um, so yeah, very very much a few exciting things coming hopefully yeah definitely i'm a member of your patron and it is fantastic you get access to all your spreadsheets and things you do and highly recommended from a li- from as little as a pound a month as well i don't even think you can get a can of coke for that now <laughs> well, i appreciate that <laughs> but um let's crack on with a little bit of recap from week eight so Oh, as always, PPR scoring. The QB1 on the week was Tua Tagovailoa, 29.18 points. He had elite efficiency this week, completing 29 of 36 passes, 382 passing yards. Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle were feasting. Three touchdowns. And I pred- I predicted uh, Jalen Hurts last week. There wasn't a show last week, but I've done a little um, tweet with a thread of why who I thought and I predicted Jalen Hurts as QB1. You'll see why this is funny when we get to wide receiver. But Tua was the QB1. Do you see Tua kicking on the rest of the season now? I think it's it's a question of expectations, isn't it? I think that he's now solidified himself as a week in, week out starter, someone, you know, a plug and play guy. But I don't think you can expect him to kick on and and break into that what is I consider a kind of top five. You and then there's kind of the the Kyler and Herbert tier after that. He he he's, he can get into that Kyler and 
Herbert range, but I don't think he's going to kick on to the Alan Hurts, Mahomes, Lamar Burrow tier, quite frankly. And yeah, I, you know, I'm I'm a noted to a non-believer. I think he's limited, but when you can be a point guard and you don't have to do anything out of the ordinary and you can just deliver the ball to Hill, Waddle, Gazicki, you know, they've they've not even got the likes of Cedric Wilson involved at all this year. And it's it's a fantastic offense that, you know, Tyreek Hill's separation stats, you know, we all know the guy's blazing fast. We all know the guy's a great route runner, but he's his separation stats on uh, next gen stats it's like the the next highest is averaging two yards of separation a route and Tyreek's at three and yes that's him but that's also the offense and and the scheme that they're creating there absolutely I mean um two is getting the ball out really well this year and it seems like since he's had them few injury problems for a few weeks the last two weeks he has been what I kind of, well, not this week, it was sensational, but like it's kind of what I expected more the week before. Um, if you've got him as your quarterback in a 1QB league and you drafted him like that, you've probably felt quite lucky. Or if you've got him as your quarterback in a 1QB league and maybe you had someone like Kirk Cousins or Derek Carr, but you're choosing two to start over them, that's fine playing the matchups. But in Superflex, he is a QB too, isn't he? Yeah, I I think he's he's probably yeah he's not somebody that you're delighted to have as your QB one because I think that at best he's he's an average QB one, isn't he? If he's your QB two, then you're feeling great and you're probably feeling like a contender. But he's never gonna be, you know. Yes, he'll have some incredible weeks as he's shown this last week, but I don't think he's ever gonna be week in week out above average as a QB one, is he? Um, so I think that yeah, if, if if you're starting him as your QB two in a super flex league, then you're you know you're delighted, aren't you? Quite frankly, absolutely. So who was your surprise package from week eight, or who do you see going forward? Yeah, I think my my guys Justin Fields. I think that a lot was made of him last year and at the beginning of the season, and he had the slow start. But I think the last four games they've. They've certainly unlocked something. Um, he's had four consecutive QB1 finishes. He scored 26 points with the QB5 this last week. And they they seem more willing to let him um, run the ball. Um, he's being far more decisive in the pocket. He's very much, you know, I don't think he, coming out, the, the knock on him was that he couldn't progress through reads. And he's never going to be a guy that can sit in the pocket and go from one to two to three to four. But they're getting him to go one to two to scramble which is all you ever want from him. And from a fantasy perspective, it's fantastic. And I think that for me, Justin Fields has entered that, you know, plug and play starter at the moment in a, you know, a one QB redraft league. And and that's something that, you know, three months ago, we probably wouldn't have believed. Very quietly as well. He's gone about that, but let's move on to running backs. The top scorer, Alvin Kamara, I thought he was going to go for a week like he did when he ruined my Christmas, but nevertheless, 42.8 points, only 62 yards on the ground, but with a rushing touchdown, of course, but he is a bit of a PPR monster, isn't he? Like nine of 10, he caught 96 yards, two receiving touchdowns. The last four weeks or so, Alvin Kamara seems back to himself really like Alvin Kamara what, what's your thoughts on him I think that Andy Dalton being back as the quarterback is fantastic for Alvin Kamara because you know yes he's he's a he's a very good running back he's very good at running the ball but let's let's not lie the real reason where he becomes elite is in the passing game and I think that my, um, James Winston's a little bit more keen to push the ball downfield, not so happy to, to check down. And we've seen in the last few weeks with Andy Dalton back in at quarterback, it certainly had a you know a rebound and resurgence for Alvin Kamara's fantasy production. So yeah, if you're if you're an Alvin Kamara owner, you're probably hoping that the Saints continue to roll with uh, with Andy Dalton. Absolutely. I mean, I spent the first sort of four weeks of this season trying to get Kamara or CMC, that kind of uh, running back, off of owners that was for, for cheap, like for nothing really, in teams where I thought like I could do okay. But 
who is your surprise package from running back? So my guy is Khalil Herbert. I feel like I come on it every show or everything I ever do. I end up talking about Khalil Herbert. So maybe it's it's becoming a little bit of a thing. Um, the guy was so he's running back fifteen this week, fifteen point nine points. Um, I, I just I'm praying that Chicago wake up and realise that he's a better running back than David Montgomery. Um, you know, David Montgomery's a free agent at the end of the year. I think he's gone as far as Chicago are concerned. I don't think they've got any ties to him. I don't think he's going to be back around. And I kind of wish they'd just say, you know what, David Montgomery, you're you're the one B, you're the the the, the RB two, and and let's see what Khalil Herbert's got because every time he's been given a full workload, he's been incredible. You know, he he he's been a, a solid RB two flex play week in week out right now on you know less than half the usage and i think that it's, it's only good things happen when he gets the ball and and hopefully that continues to happen and he continues to get fed a little bit more as we move forward i mean i couldn't agree more and with justin fields as well khalil herbert the, the problem is the bears and to me that is what it is as soon as they sort of like you say, they're sl slowly starting to unleash fields. Could they slowly start to unleash Herbert a bit more? Hopefully. Um, but move on to wide receiver. The top scorer was AJ Brown, 39.6 points. And this is what I was saying earlier. So where I predicted Hurts, obviously the Eagles, and it was Tua. I predicted Tyreek Hill for wide receiver, and it's AJ Brown. So I got them the wrong way round. Tyreek Hill didn't have a bad week, though. Let's be honest. You can pat yourself on the back with that one. He did. Him, Jalen Waddle, DeAndre Hopkins, all over 30 points as well. So it was another big wide receiver week. Um, but AJ Brown, 11 targets, six receptions, 156 yards, all three touchdowns in double coverage. Now, to me at the minute, AJ Brown, he seems like he was an absolute bargain this season from where we was drafting him before we started. <laughs> What's your thoughts on Jalen Hurts, though? There was lots of questions pre-season about will he be the guy next year or whatever with Philly. He's answering them, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. I, I was one of those people. I said that I don't think Philadelphia are convinced that Jalen Hurts was, was going to be the franchise quarterback. And that was the reason why I think they'd got those two first round picks and had pushed one into next year because I think they wanted to have the ammo to go and get a rookie QB in the draft if Jalen Hurts proved he wasn't the guy. And obviously he had that horrific playoff game against Tampa Bay. Um, and I think that that basically Jalen Hurts came in and has shown more than we could ever believe. You know, it's that wide receiver one fallacy. He's got the elite guy. AJ Brown's really elevated Jalen Hurts as a passer. And I think that Philadelphia now would be silly not to commit to, to Jalen Hurts long term. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was high on him before when he was coming out, like with the combine and everything. He seemed really humble, really clever as well. Um, but we've got a question. Well, I don't know if it's a question. I ain't read it yet. Wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if Herbert is given the RB1 role coming out of their bye in week 14. Their season will definitely be over by then. And as Rich says, they can see what he can do in a starter role. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I, I I hope that it's before week fourteen. If I'm being honest, and uh, week fourteen might be, uh, I've got an awful lot of Khalil Herbert shares, so a lot of my teams are hoping that that comes a little bit sooner than week fourteen. A lot of my um, best ball on DraftKings also hopes it's before week fourteen. <laughs> um, let's jump on. Oh no, sorry, your surprise package at wide receiver. Tell me about this one because this intrigued me. So um, it's Jacoby Myers. Like, I, I don't think people realise quite how good Jacoby Myers has been this year. And I think that some of that has been that he's missed a couple of games. Some of that has been that he's, he's not a big, sexy name, is he? Let's be honest, it's Jacoby Myers. People sort of think of him as a an average kind of underrated guy. And New England certainly not setting world lights at the moment. But if I was to tell you that there's a wide receiver that is eighth in yards per route run, 20th in targets per route run, 17th in target share, and is currently the wide receiver 12 in points per game. And nobody is talking about him. And that's Jacoby Myers. The, the guy is, like, it's, it's unbelievable. 
Um, he was the wide receiver 10 this week with 21 points. He is averaging more points per game than Amon Ra St. Brown, CD Lamb, Chris Olave, Michael Pittman, and Debo Samuel. It's he is a stud hiding in plain sight, and, and nobody wants to talk about him, nobody wants to acknowledge it. But he's done it with Bailey Zappi at quarterback. He's doing it with Mac Jones at quarterback. He's having a fantastic year. And, yeah, I, I think that, that people need to wake up and realise that the guy's really good. Yeah, and, I mean, he had a he had a good year last year as well, really. He wasn't If he had a few more touchdowns, he would have been right up there. But here's a question, Rich. You can take this one. Jacoby Myers or Keenan Allen rest of the year? I think what you've just said it explains it, but... Uh, yeah, J- Jacoby Myers by an absolute mile. Um, I am terrified of King Allen's hamstring. I don't know what he's done, but there's talk that he's not going to play again this week. Um, I know he's getting old, but that must be one hell of a hamstring injury. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I've got Jacoby Myers as a top 20 wide receiver rest of season. Um, King Allen's probably not in my top 30, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame you for that. I've seen something like he could have been put in too soon before the bye week, possibly a setback there or a setback just over the bye week um, working out. And obviously hamstring injuries are dodgy anyway. Like with Debo, he's got a knock there now. The bye week is probably at a perfect time for him, to be honest, to rest. But tight end and... The top scorer is Tyler Conklin, 25.9 points. He had two touchdowns, but his usage his usage, sorry, has spiked again. So there was a severe dip in weeks five and six, but his first game with double-figure targets this week. Now, Rich, you're a Jets fan, so you're having a whirl of a time this year, and you obviously watch them more than me. Talk us through Conklin. I thought it was due to Joe Flacco, to be honest, throwing the ball so much is why he's he was doing so well at the start of the season. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the fact that the Jets were averaging over 50 pass attempts per game was a big part of the reason that Conklin flashed. Um, I'll be honest, I wouldn't read too much into this one-week thing. I think this is a one-week blip. Um, I think that... You know, if you look at underlying numbers so far this week, you know, 30% target share. He had four deep targets. That's 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 not normal. I think this is just a one week blip and I expect him to to disappear again. Um, I think, unfortunately, the way tight end position is, there's basically two really good guys. There's four or five guys that will probably get you around 10 points a week and then it's anyone else you're basically just hoping for a touchdown and i think that tyler conklin is absolutely in that that category i think there's no way that i'm expecting a 30 percent target share moving forward i mean if he saw a 15 percent target share i'd be pretty delighted but i think he's you know probably going to have two or three boom weeks again for the rest of the season but he's certainly not someone that i'm feeling comfortable starting on a, a week-to-week basis no absolutely but your surprise package moving forward, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> so my surprise package is Dalton Schultz, who's the tight end five this week, uh, scored 13.4 fancy points. Um, so when he got injured, it was given a three to four week time scale for the PCL injury. That has now happened. He has had three to four weeks. Okay, he played through it, but now we're starting to see him fully healthy, and I think that this last week was just a, fl- a sign of things to come. I think now Dak's back. I think now we're hopefully going to start to see him pick up and and return to that 2021 form. You know, 20, 27% target share on Sunday. Um, and I think that he is now back into that every week starter that you can feel comfortable um, that hopefully most of us drafted him to be. Yeah, absolutely. He hit the waiver wire in so many redraft leagues and... I was a bit cautious, but obviously I thought when Dak comes back, he will be all right. And when he gets rid of his niggle, and he, he'll be fine. And he is. So going forward, if you've managed to get Schultz on your roster from the waivers or you've held on to him or whatever, uh, he is a plug and play for me. Absolutely. But you, I, I introduced you as a dynasty god, and I stand by that. Now, we had the trade deadline yesterday. 
and it's it's a little bit selfish for me because there's a few spots where Calvin Ridley is available or you know on the block or I've got him. What are you doing with him? That's the huge one for me from yesterday for fantasy football. What are you doing with Calvin Ridley and Dynasty Rich? I'm I'm pretty so the way I like to play Dynasty is I'm pretty aggressive and guys like Calvin Ridley he is when healthy he was a top 15 wide receiver in terms of dynasty value now he'll be two years later when he finally gets on the field and he'll be approaching 28 so he's probably not going to be a top 15 wide receiver but he's going to be a top 20 top 25 wide receiver when he's fit and healthy in jacksonville okay so you're probably having to pay about wide receiver 50 prices right now <coughs> which works out roughly about a mid second is kind of his rough value at the moment i am very happy to go and pay for that now if i'm a contender i'm probably not going and paying that now because i'm worrying about winning the title this year but if i'm you know a fringe contender around that sort of four five six seed or if i'm in a rebuild you should absolutely have calvin ridley on your roster the one thing i would say though is that I'd probably wait a couple of weeks before you go and buy him because right now the trade has happened. He's fresh in people's minds. I don't know about you, but I've seen him thrown on the trade block in so many of my leagues in the last few days because people are like, right, Calvin Ridley's in the news. Now I'll sell. I reckon if you wait a couple of weeks, people will kind of forget about it again and his price will drop back down and you can probably buy him for that mid second. I think people are, are, are fishing for an overpay, should we say? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like um I I'm rubbish at Dynasty because I just like I'm feel like I'm a competitive person and I just like to win straight away. So I find myself in a rebuild too soon, more often than not. But Ridley is one of those that yeah, if you are in a rebuild, like I am in a lot of them, absolutely wait because recency bias is ridiculous and like you say, after a couple of weeks it will die down but we are here with the midway mock today so we're pretending that fantasy football well the nfl is going to start tomorrow thursday night football and we are going to draft as if the league starts tomorrow but knowing what we know so far from this season so shall we kick it off i think it's okay. about time it's one qb ppr and yeah that is about it 10 rounds 30 seconds per pick let's get it started i will share that screen here as well there we go and we have started so this is one of the lads from the fantasy nuts group chat actually sam he's up first i don't know if he is online <laughs> Everybody else is there. We're going to have a timeout first pick. That'd be brilliant. Oh, Let's there he is. It. Seven seconds. McCaffrey. No surprise, I don't think. Mike Bland, this is the one who uh, sent the message in earlier about Herbert. He's in, actually in Brazil at the minute working. So, well, we he's not working off. right now, but I don't know if there's a uh, Wi Fi issue or something like that. Maybe. Come on. Oh, well, Stefan Diggs at 102. That makes me happy. He hates running backs unless they are after an ADP of 100 and he'll watch this and he'll laugh. <clears throat> he won't draft them. <laughs> well, I've got Derek you Henry. You went Derek Henry, yeah. Talk us through that, mate. I think, look, it's, it's a risk. Come on. Um, because we all know that even in your away. But I just think that with the way that that Titans offense is moving, I think he's going to have to be the centerpiece for them to you know, make a playoff run. And I just think they're going to feed him the ball. And I think that, yeah, I'm, I'm treading a fine line. And as I said, it's quite an aggressive move. But I think that right now, 
I'd probably have him running back two for me. Maybe uh, I'd probably take Eckler and CMC oh, ahead of him. On, but I, I just think oh, that we know on, that he's going to get work. So yeah, I'm I'm happy to take the risk and probably build hero RB from here on out. Absolutely. I mean the um. The two picks there that have obviously jumped up draft boards from before the season is Alvin Kamara. A lot of people weren't touching <clears> due <throat> to the legal issues, legal issues, and Saquon Barkley, who was obviously coming off the injuries and stuff. Let's go, team. Let's go. 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 let us go I, I really like that turn. <laughs> I also really like that turn. I don't <laughs> hard, even think I need to, to explain it. it. If um, basically what the, the way I attack this year a lot. Well, apart from well, I probably would have took Jefferson there to be honest. <clears> if <throat> I was the tenth pick in a redraft and he was still available, but oh, come on, I dude. do towards the back end of a draft. I do like to get hold of a tight end either the first or the second round, get that Kelsey or Andrews, and then you haven't got to worry apart from one week. Let's go, team. Let's go. Well, I, um, I may also be looking at onesie position here. Different onesie position to what you've taken. But, um, oh, I've been I've been sniped. <laughs> um, oh, now I'm thrown. Okay. I, I'm going to go Jamie Model. So Josh Allen at 205 there, which is the 15th pick. And I had him I had him at eleven. I just I just jotted down a top ninety and I had him at eleven. I think that the 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 positional advantage you're getting, you're getting like six or seven points a week on average. That's as much as it's a one D position, as much as you know. We've had it ingrained in our heads that weight on quarterback and late round QB and everything like that. I think that positional advantage is so massive right now. So I, I expected more wide receivers uh, before it was my pick, and the plan was Kelsey Josh Allen here. Come on. Because, like you say about the positional advantages, if the league was starting tomorrow, that's two people. I don't have to draft another player at any <coughs> positions. D hop. That's a self explanatory one, I think. Yeah, I think people slept on him far too much. I think the six week suspension, I think people overhyped. Um, he's a top 12 receiver for me, rest of season. And I think that you've seen in the last couple of weeks, he's, he's smashing it. I, I went really aggressive with DeAndre Hopkins as well. Um, taking him before. Probably like the sixth, maybe like the fifth, sixth round. I was taking him, even with the suspension, um, just for this, you know, what he can do. And people was like, eh, "But can he?" It's not an injury, you know. It's not anything that could set him back. He was still working out and everything. And yeah, I think he's got he, DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> I think he had. It, it was a weird year last year, wasn't it? He's was fighting the injury and he was never 100%. I think that people had that in his minds. But, yeah, I, I was very confident that he was a smash at ADP. Um, he, was a, he was a screaming buy in all the dynasty for me as well. Absolutely. So, Mike Bland said he would have taken CMC at 102, I imagine. So, that's why he went digs. And we got another one. That's a question for you, Rich, why I make my pick. Trade away Walker and Godwin for Jefferson. I probably wouldn't, but I mean, that's, I'd need to know how good the rest of your roster is. Um, you know, if you're in a position where you're, they're probably one of your flexes and you can upgrade from Godwin to Jefferson, then I'd consider it. But I think Godwin is still a top 20 wide receiver and I think Walker's a top eight running back rest of the season um so i think i'd i'd struggle to pull that trigger unless i was absolutely loaded 
Yeah, I, I really like Chris Godwin as well. It's another one I went quite aggressive with. Um, if I missed out on DeAndre Hopkins, maybe I'll I'd get Godwin like around the same sort of time. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to say that I was as confident, but um, yeah, no, I was I was very scared off Godwin in redraft. Um, I was worried about him him not playing to start the year. I did get him in my home league, so I'm happy with that. But yeah, I've I didn't get him pretty much anywhere else this year. So Chaka says his RBs are Saquon, Jacobs, and Walker. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's 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 unreal. Um, yeah, in that situation, I probably would um, grab that. I'm, I'm I'm surprised with um, Aaron Jones and Leonard Fournette going before Jacobs here. I thought Jacobs was a screaming value there. I he was if Hopkins wasn't on the board, he would have been the next player I'd have taken. So yeah, to to get him in the fourth round, I think that's unbelievable value. Yeah, I, I mean, I had to scroll down a bit because there's a lot of, with sleepers at ADP. Obviously, oh, there's a lot of um, people suspended out, things like that now. Um, Josh Jacobs was the RB20 on Fantasy Pros. Yeah, I, I've got him. I wrote him down. He's a top six back for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um Murph actually, I don't want to spoil it too much, but he's in an article with Fantasy Pros that <coughs> came out today and he put Josh Jacobs as a sell rest of the year. Um there's another one here. Swift or Ken Walker rest of the season PPR. Um I'd rather have Ken Walker. I'm a little bit worried about DeAndre Swift. This this injury's lingering. They've said he's not hundred percent healthy. Um, Jamal Williams isn't isn't going anywhere and seems to be getting all the goal line work. Um, so yeah, I, th I think Swift is an incredible back. You know, he's he's absolutely superb, but I'm I am concerned about him. Right. Whereas it's I'm I'm very much all in on Kenneth Walker. Jamal Williams was a pain for Swift before any injury turned up as well. The second quarterback's just gone there, but let's talk about the pick before Damian Pierce at four oh eight. Feels feels slightly aggressive, um, but it's fantastic playoff schedule. Um, I just I worry about that offense. I think with Brandon Cooks is now throwing his toys out the pram because he didn't get traded. Nico Collins is injured. I worry that Damian Pierce is going to see a lot of seven eight man boxes and uh, be, be be asked to to carry the offense, which I'm not sure if uh, if he's going to be able to. Quite frankly. I mean, he's doing really well, better than I expected, and I weren't even that low on Pierce really coming out. But like you say, with Cooks being a bit of a baby and things like that, it could be a bit early. It could be, absolutely. Ramondra Stevenson, 502. You know, I love Ramondra Stevenson for the rest of the season. I think it's uh, fantastic. Yeah, Harris missed that time um, <clears throat> hamstring injury, I think it was as well, which is always dodgy, like we said. But Stevenson has shown more than Damian Harris can do, I think. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a big back that can catch the ball, which is, you know, exciting, isn't it? So I, I've got another player. I've, I've got a little bit. This could come back and bite me. I've got another player ranked ahead of Chris Godwin. But I've gone for Chris Godwin because I think the player I'm going to draft is ranked lower. So I'm hoping he's going to come back to me. So I'm going to get annoyed if uh, he now gets sniped. Do tell us when he's picked. And if I pick him, I will be very happy about that. <laughs> Just for fun, really, more than anything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so... Well, Lost Soul Fantasy is a guy called Chesh. He was going robust RB before he autoed Najee Harris. Austin yeah, that Eckler, is a, that is a Mixon, very robust RB team, isn't it? Joe Mixon, who I absolutely hate. Why do you hate Joe and Mixon? I, I found myself back in on him this year from downplaying him last year, but I feel like I got burnt too much, so I was like taking him when it where it was good value and stuff, but I just I don't, I don't know. It might be a bit of a personal vendetta, maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> TJ Hawkinson, kill. You are a smart man. I absolutely love that trade, Rich. 
um, mm. by my Vikings, getting Hawkinson in. I think it's great for your Vikings. I think tight end three in fantasy feels a little bit rich, if I'm being honest. Um, I'm not quite sure if I love it that much. Um, but yeah, I, I, lo- I think for your Vikings, it's a fantastic move. What are you going here then? I'm running out of time and I'm looking and I don't like nothing. I'll stick with you on the Come on. Um, Joe Burrow. Like that. I love Joe Burrow. He's probably my favourite NFL player. Um... As I think just a player. Yeah, I think there it's been really interesting to watch in the last couple of weeks where they've shifted this offense where because they were so ridiculous in that basically whenever they were under center they ran the ball and whenever they were in shotgun they passed and now they've gone completely shotgun offense. I'm intrigued to see if the the NFL is going to adjust and they're going to have to readjust again. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I'm surprised actually that Burrow went after Herbert given the state of um, LA at the minute. Absolutely, absolutely. I'd, I'd definitely be taking Burrow over Herbert personally. As Mike I said, Bland I think it's, said, it's a big five. Mike Bland said, <clears throat> I thought you would like Mixon as he's morphing <clears throat> into Zeke before our eyes with his inefficiency. <laughs> All right, so the guy that I wanted to take has fallen to me. It was a guy we've already talked about on this uh, on the show. Oh, my and you got him. That's it. And you got him. Probably need to stop out. taking my receivers now. <laughs> yeah. I have sent out a few offers for Jacoby Myers actually, especially in redraft. Yeah, I think it's I think as I said, I think it's a great move. Um you know, I think people don't realise how good he's been. It's um let me see if I can scroll and find his ADP before the year. Because it is going to be quite low, isn't it? Come on. On sleep, he was 140 something on sleeper. Right. So overall with fantasy pros, he's 157 in PPR, the wide receiver 56. So he was drafted after the likes of Michael Gallup carrying an injury into the season, DJ Chark, Tyler Boyd, maybe fair a little bit, Sky Moore, Marquez Valdez, Scantlin. There's no way he should be in the same conversation as some of these. Kadarius Tony was way before him, 10 places. Yeah, there's no way I'd let I'd um, draft some of these before Jacoby Myers anyway, <coughs> even back then. Yeah, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? I'd love to. I'd love to have said I had this hindsight and uh, I own Jacob Myers everywhere, but unfortunately, yeah, I, I don't. Brees Hall was picked there. Was that a mistake? That's a fantastic. That's a fantastic pick of Lockett at this point in the draft criminally underrated every year and every year is uh out produces it yeah absolutely let me apart from them little bits where he was like carrying that bit of a in well, even then he's still done all right to be fair So he's still the wide receiver 12 in PPR. Yeah, he's, he's just been fantastic. He's just every year outproduces his ADP without fail. I don't think I've got him in a single league, Rich, unless it's Dynasty. <laughs> Kyle Pitts there. Now, what number is he? Second One, two, end. three, four, five. Tight end six. And the guy already has Mark Andrews. What do you it's make? It's a ceiling of that? play, isn't it? It's a ceiling play. I think if if we're if you were to sit here and say 
which which tight end could be a league winner, it's Kelsey Andrews and then Carl Pitts, isn't it? If you were sitting here saying which tight end do you feel is going to be a plug and play starter every week for the next three months, I reckon Carl Pitts would probably be seven, eight, nine, someone like that. So yeah, I, I I'm never going to hate on anyone who's punting purely for upside. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's well well worth the punt at this point in draft. So Sam, who picked Brees Hall, just commented in the sleep per draft chat. He's drafting based upon if we were to start the season again, basically without Brees Hall already having the injury is what, why he took him there. I think he'd have gone a lot earlier if yeah, everybody th- else was doing the same. I think if he was fully healthy, I think he's a first round pick, isn't he? Absolutely, absolutely. It'll be interesting, we'll, we'll, It'll be interesting we'll to see where injury. he goes next year. I think I think he will slide because of the injury. But um, without the injury, if he carried on doing what he was doing, he was on pace for ridiculous numbers as a rookie running back. Well, he's top, he would top have been, five after a slow start, wasn't he? He would have been the consensus one one, and that's only because Robert Sala was working him into the offense as well. Yeah. He, he would have been the consensus 101, I think, next year. Right. For me, that's an easy one because there's guys before Brandon Ayuk who shouldn't be going before Brandon Ayuk, especially Drake London. And the other one, after the light of in the trade, I'm going for the upside there with George Pickens. Swing swing for the fences. That's it. And if, by the time you're in the eighth round, where you've nearly got all your starters complete, why not? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, makes perfect sense to me. Especially after Claypool's out the door now. I mean, there is, there's a bit more there for someone. Yeah, you just, you just that whole offence just feels like it needs a bit of a... A, a kick up the backside, doesn't it? I think a new offensive coordinator is something exciting because it just feels very stale, for want of a better phrase. It's yeah, it's, it's not great right now. What do you make of Michael Carter there? Um, obviously, James Robinson is now in New York. I think I, I've said this a couple of times. I think Michael Carter is going to be the the lead back i don't think he's going to be a, a workhorse but i think he's probably going to be a 55 60 percent split guy i don't think james robinson's going to come in and you know take over the entire backfield so yeah i, I don't hate it personally I'd, I'd probably swing for another couple of guys that have maybe got a little bit more upside um but i i don't hate the pick and at this point in the draft it's it's well worth a, a swing isn't it Absolutely. I mean, I, I like Michael Carter personally, um, not as much as Matt from Fantasy Wildcard, but I do, I do like him. <laughs> um, I think he's a good player. He's, I just think he's never going to be a an every down back, is he? No, and like like where I says with there was working Brees into the offense and things like that, like. He was showing that he can do it in the passing game a bit, and then Brees started getting more passing work, and then he shows, oh, I can do it in the on the ground as well, and then Brees started getting all the work, pretty much. But um, James Robinson's a bit of a bulldozer, isn't he? If you need a, a hard couple yards, he's gonna be out there. Yeah, I think he's. You know, if you were just looking for a one or two down back in terms of pure pure rushing ability. I think James Robinson's probably top top five in the league, and I think that that's massively underrated. I think it's the the things around the edges that he doesn't do as well. But I think in terms of pure rushing ability, I think he's fantastic. Which is why the Jags drafted Etienne right in the first place. Yeah, exactly that. I mean, you know, the Jags the Jags didn't expect James Robinson to be what James Robinson was. Otherwise they would have drafted him. You know, there was a reason why he went undrafted. I think he was a pleasant surprise. Um, 
and you know was was house money wasn't he so that's why they've, you know, we can talk about them drafting etienne and that whole regime um but it's all a bit wild isn't it all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna grab i feel like i'm just grabbing the guys that we've talked about but i'm gonna go and grab two of here i said he's my qb8 behind the big five the big five and then herbert and kyla so yeah i'm happy to get him as what's that qb9 off the board qb9 yeah QB9. I don't mind it. I don't. It's a, it's such a strange one drafting now. <laughs> I mean, I, I joined a best ball halfway through last year and it went absolutely tits up. It was like a guillotine type best ball and I think I was gone yeah. in the first two weeks. Come on. I did. We did a, a dynasty startup last week and that was really weird drafting. Very strange. <laughs> Where are you looking with the final two picks then? So I need a running back regardless to, well, I, I wouldn't if there was more rounds, but for the sake of this, I'm going to take a running back. And it's someone I've faded a lot, but I'll go Chase Edmonds there. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll explain after I work out who I'm taking here. Uh Uh, I've got Tyler Boyd. Stop it. So, Chase Edmonds. The, that trade on, to... Dude. Obviously, it wasn't his trade. It was Bradley Chubb's trade, and they just kind of gave Chase Edmonds, like, here you go, have a running back. Javante's out. For for this, the rest of this season, it's <clears> not <throat> going to be the worst option, I don't think. I think it's actually a better spot now than he was in Miami at the start. So, you've got Melvin Gordon and Latavius Murray, who are both very similar. And Chase Edmonds brings a bit of a different dynamic to that backfield for me. The fact he can catch quite well. Um, Russell Wilson needs something to change. And I think even if he gets a kind of 50-50 split, he could be serviceable. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I was I was a big Chase Edmonds believer before the season. Um so yeah, I, I I feel like I'm gonna get burnt again, but I quite like the move for him. Certainly, agree with everything you said. James Connor there in the tenth, the on the foreman. Oh wow, that's sad. It's James tomorrow, James Connor. I'm I'm annoyed because James Connor was the guy I was hoping would fall to me when I took Tua. Um, but yeah, ha happy with the on the foreman here. What do you? Because uh, it seemed like Tuba was the lead back, didn't it? I think Tube is um, probably going to be the better back to own, but I just don't know if he's going to stay healthy, and that ankle injury is is concerning. Um, so yeah, that's that's why I've gone down to Foreman here. I think the fact that Tube is going to get the passing work always makes him slightly more valuable. So we've got a question here. Hi, loving the stream. Thank you very much, Captain Joe King. Hope you're not joking about that. But his team is Kirk Cousins, Eckler, Derek Henry, Devontae Adams, D-Hop, Kadarius Tony, Taysom Hill. He has the option of trading D-Hop for Chubb. Should I do it? PPR, 6-2 and two he is. League 10. So is that a 10-team league? No. So I would say, for me, I'd absolutely do that deal as long as you've got a flex spot. If you're having to start, if you can only start two running backs and three wide receivers then there's no way I'd do that deal because you're going to have either Eckler, Henry or Chubb sat on your bench each week. But um, yeah, I, I love, I, I, I love D-Hop. Don't, don't get me wrong. I think he's fantastic. But for me, Chubb's a top five back rest of season. So yeah, if you can have three top five backs, that's, well, that's one, the, one mighty. The, the question for me here, Rich, if um, you want to, you're looking at the balance of the roster and stuff, and he's put Kadarius Tony there. So I'm assuming that's his wide receiver free. He must have sh literally shrapnel after that. If he gives away D Hop for Chubb, if there's a flex spot, yeah, I get it. Chubb can start. Who is he going to be starting at wide receiver? I'm not sure it matters if you've got Eckler, Henry, and Chubb. Does it? I think that for I mean, me, I think it's it's a move. You know, we've seen here Chubb's gone ahead of D Hop in this in this draft. 
And I think that if you were, were looking at it pure value wise, I completely get what you're saying. And, and it is a risky move. But as I said, I, I, I like to be aggressive. And as long as you've got that flex spot where you can start all three running backs, I think it's a, a yes from me. I mean, Eckler can go and get a thousand yards, I suppose. So he could be a wide receiver too, just not <laughs> on paper. Um, is there anything? Have a quick scan over the draft board, especially sort of like the back six rounds. Is there anything that jumps out for you as value or really bad value? <laughs> you want me to start slating people now? I really yeah, like Cordero Patterson, Cordero Patterson in the seventh. I think that's a, a, a sneaky nice pick. Um, Adam Thielen, I'm I'm worried about. Um, you'd know more than me, I'm sure, but I'm worried that we've already seen his target share start to decline with Hawkinson coming to town. Are we going to see a move away from that red zone usage that has buoyed his fancy production over the past, you know, couple of years that that's, yeah. that's a, a worry for me. So Michael Blander said, absolutely slate people, but so yeah, I, I completely agree. I love the TJ Hawkinson trade. Not so much for fantasy, but it feelings getting old now, and he always misses some sort of time with an injury. He's questionable now for next week. Um, and yeah, the red zone usage is what has kept him afloat. If if Michael Bland wants me to slate people, I can say I think Juju in the sixth was a reach. There we have it. Mike Bland, Juju at 6-9. He will respond to that as well. <laughs> so my wife just said over here, don't we know it? You were singing in the bath about it. She's on about the TJ Hawkinson trade. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're excited about it then? Uh, uh, it took me a good 45 minutes to calm down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. But no, that's the draft anyway. That is the draft. So, uh, having a little look, for me, yeah, May is, is great. Raheem Mostert as well in the seventh. Yeah, it feels feels maybe you know maybe I probably should have gone another running back. Feels a little bit running back light, but I I I love wide receivers. I can't stop drafting them pretty much at any point. So yeah, hard hard for me to pass up the right wide receiver value when it was there. I mean, you've got Derek Henry there, and then if you was to follow that with Moser and Foreman, looking at them wide receivers, I'd be very happy with that team. Moser and Foreman are both the number one on their side. They're both hard runners. Most of is shit of a shovel, just like Tyreek Hill. And, you know, he knows the scheme in Miami. They've got a lovely run in as well for their running backs. So, knowing what we know now, yeah, it's, it's not, I like it there. I like it a lot. Feels he's uh, one, one bad tackle away from getting injured yet again. He's spent his entire career getting injured. So, probably going to happen very soon. Do you think? Isn't it? This is a impromptu one. Do you think Jeff Wilson going there, they'll help keep each other healthy kind of thing? Maybe. Maybe. I think that certainly Jeff Wilson will get more work than Chase Edmonds has the last couple of weeks. Um, I think that most that's never been that type of back that's getting huge amounts of usage between the tackles. So... You know, it's a lot of that outside zone scheme. He's getting out in space. So he's never going to be a, you know, Derek Henry in terms of the hits he's taking. Um, but a lot of his injuries have been kind of soft tissue, you know, muscle pulls and things like that. So, you know, it's, it's not necessarily the, the hits and the pounding that's causing those issues, is it? Yeah, absolutely. But it's been a lot of fun having your mate as well. Um just remind everybody where they can find you. Uh, yeah, no. Th first of all, thank you ever so much for having me on. It was, it's been a pleasure. Um, love, love what you're doing. Um, love all the stuff you do as well. So, um, so yeah, keep up the good work there. Um, yeah, anyone can find me. I'm on uh, Twitter at Dynasty Island, um, and then you can find 
as I said, I'm doing the uh, Five Yard Dynasty podcast every Tuesday. We live stream it. Uh, you can find all my written work over at DLF Football. And then, as you said, there's my Patreon, um, which is patreon.com slash Dynasty Island. As and you can still... see below. Oh, well, thank you very much. And there's still tickets available for the UK FFC. Um, if, you've, if you've not got one, um, it's come, come and have a look because it was a fantastic event last year. And uh, as I said, hopefully it's going to be bigger and better this year. Yeah, and I, I second that. It really was an amazing day out. I think me and Connor was probably two of the first people to buy tickets because as soon as we seen it, bang on, bought for next year. We had a great day. Got to meet you, which was fantastic, as well as loads of other great people in the UK fantasy football community. And yeah, it's going to be bigger and it's going to be better. It will keep growing, I'm sure. But Again, thank you for coming on, Rich. You can have a look at the bottom of the screen, find Rich and his work everywhere there. Um, yeah, thank you for tuning in. If you're going to watch back later, it's appreciated as well. Drop a like, drop a subscribe, and until next time, see you later.